Hello fellow mechanical and electrical engineers, I am Reed from the m &E Engineers. We are here today to do a series of videos to explain to you the equipments that you will be using day in day out during your work life. And we will also be sharing with you what are the important points that you need to take note when selecting your equipment. I have learned all these lessons by myself and trust me it was very very difficult. So I hope that this short video will give you a good head start than the one I had to go through. For this video, I have chosen a few important points of the MCCB that you must know. So feel free to let me know what you guys want to know more in my next video. For today's video, we are going to share with you what is the MCCB. We will first lay it out in simple layman terms and after that, in terms of an engineer. So we hope you find this video useful. So, what is the MCCB? The MCCB is basically a switch that turns on and off something, like a light or a load. The MCCB also comes in different size and frames. So, why don't we just use a switch? This is because MCCB is able to take higher currents compared with a switch. If you were to just use a switch, the high current will break the switch easily. Also, the MCCB is fitted with current sensors that will trip the circuit automatically. We will explain more about the current sensors later in the video. The full name of a MCCB is Molded Case Circuit Breaker. A MCCB typically comes in two poles, three poles and four poles configuration. A MCCB usually comes in 10 amps to 1600 amps. It is usually advised to use MCCB up to a maximum of 799 amps. For 800 amps applications and above it is recommended to select ACB. The IEC standards we refer to will be IEC 60947-2 for industrial usage and IEC 60898 for domestic usage. IN is the rated current value that determines when the MCCB trips due to overload protection, however this will usually not be the ampere that the MCCB will be tripped on contrary to many people who commonly misunderstood. Rated current is the current allowed to pass through the MCCB indefinitely under the safest tested conditions stated in IEC 60947. We will explain the four main trip settings in the LSIG section later in the video. You may also call IN the Ampere Trip AT, of the MCCB. The IN of a MCCB can be found on the face of the MCCB located at these locations. Rated Frame Current INM, is the maximum current value for which the MCCB is designed, and it also determines the physical dimensions of the device. The rated frame current defines the upper limit of the adjustable trip current range. A MCCB comes in different frame sizes. Amp frames refers to the highest amp that size of MCCB can supply. You may also call it the Ampere Frame AF, of the MCCB. By now you should be already confused. So let me explain to you in simple terms. Imagine both IN and INM Ampere Frame and Ampere Trip in terms of a bus. Ampere frame determines the maximum capacity of the number of people that you can allow on the bus and the bus will still operate normally. Whereas ampere trip is the number of people really in the bus at that point of time. Usually ampere trip will be multiplied by a factor that you can be set on the MCB to lower the current protection as and when needed because you will never know the actual site conditions. Hope you understand what is ampere trip and ampere frame now. So let's move on to the next topic. Next up, what is LSIG? Before we go into what is LSIG, let me share with you why do we need to trip the MCCB. The circuit breaker will trip the increase in current in order to protect the load and the cable connected to it by stopping the current flow altogether. The operator may then solve the problem and come back to turn it back on. This applies for all other tripping occurrences. So basically, we trip the MCCB to protect the equipments that are connected to it. LSIG is the four different kinds of current that make an MCCB trip. L being long time trip, IR. S being short time trip, ISD. 
I being instantaneous trip, I, I, and the last ground fault, which is ground trip, I, G. Long time trip, I, R, is usually the amount of current that the circuit breaker determines that the load is taking slightly too much current than usual. This can be caused by various abnormalities. So typically 1.05 to 1.2 times adjustable of the current, IN, and as the name long time suggests, the MCCB will trip typically after a preset time, TR. When the current of the circuit reaches the pickup current level of 1.05 to 1.2 times the IR, it is basically monitoring whether the current will normalize for the duration of the time delay. If it does not, the MCCB will automatically trip the circuit, thus protecting the loads from danger. To put it in simple layman terms, if you poke your friend once a day, I think they will be okay with it. So if you are poking them constantly for the past 15 minutes, they will feel quite irritated and then they will tell you off. So basically this is the same as long time trip. Short time trip, ISD, is the current typically 1.5 times to 10 times of the long time current. It is usually used for the protection against short circuit. At 10 times the current, it is highly likely that the loads will be damaged within a short period of time. Hence, there is a need to trip the circuit breaker very quickly. However, when you look at the dials that you can select, there is actually a time delay for short time trip. So why does short time trip have a time delay, TSD? The answer is simple. It is to resist the surge current and nuisance current. A DOL starter may have 6 to 10 times the surge current within the first few milliseconds to seconds. We do not want the MCCB to trip due to this normal phenomenon, hence, it is logical that we have short time trip with the delay to tide over this starting current. Next up, instantaneous trip. II is pretty straightforward. It's simply the current level that instantly trips the circuit breaker. Usually it is around 2 to 10 times of the IN. I cannot stress enough of the importance of instantaneous trip to a cable installation and load installation because the current is simply so high. This feature is always one of the most overlooked feature when selecting a MCCB, so please do not make the same mistake. Last but not least, we have G, ground trip, IG. This trip setting is responsible for monitoring the earth fault current circulating in the PE conductor in your TNS system. A ground fault can cause serious problems like insulation problems leading to an electrical shock or equipment damage. This feature, however, can be left out in the MCCB because there are other equipments that are able to do this protection as well. Putting it in the MCCB will just cause the overall installation price to increase significantly. So unless there are other constraints, it might be a good idea that you leave this out and do it separately. If you find this video useful so far, please help to subscribe. And if this video have helped you, I would really appreciate if you could give it a like. Next. Let me share a little bit about what is braking capacity, ICU and ICS. First, we have ICS, the Operating Short Circuit Braking Capacity. This is the highest fault current that the MCCB can trip without being damaged permanently. The MCCB shall remain fully reusable after interrupting such faults at such currents as long as it doesn't exceed this value. Whereas, ultimate Short Circuit Breaking Capacity ICU, is the maximum possible fault current that the MCCB can clear or contain. If the fault current exceeds this value, the MCCB will be unable to trip or contain the fault, thus having a rupture. If a fault is above the ICS but below the ICU occur, the MCCB can interrupt it successfully but most likely it will need a replacement due to the damage suffered. However, the MCCB will not rupture and affect the switchboard. Look at the ICS and ICU in the current line explanation that I created. When the circuit breaker is at 100 amps, nothing will happen if the long time trip is 100 amps. When there is a fault below 36 kA, the circuit breaker will automatically trip and no damage will happen as the breaker we have selected is 36 kA. When there is a 40 kA fault, which is above the ICS, 
the breaker might not operate normally after the fault. However, there will not be any damage to the surrounding of the MCCB as it has not reached the ultimate SSC, short circuit current, ICU. If there is a fault higher than 50 kA, the ICU level, the circuit breaker might rupture and cause damage around it. Therefore, it is critical to do up a short circuit calculation before selecting the circuit breakers. And here I'll give you your third pro tip. Always select ICS equals to ICU 100% circuit breakers. So you don't have to worry about your system performance. We have reached the end of our video. We hope that you have learned something about MCCB from this video. Do remember to like and subscribe for more upcoming videos on our channel. Do let us know in the comment section below on what you want to hear from us next. Thank you so much for staying until the end of this video. See you.